Welcome to the Blacksmith Chronicles podcast, the official podcast of Ryan Johnson Ministries. This podcast was created for the purpose of equipping others for the advancement of the kingdom of God. We hope that you enjoy this episode and encourage you to subscribe to the Blacksmith Chronicles today. For more information about Ryan Johnson Ministries, please visit www.ryanjohnson.us or email us directly at info at ryanjohnson.us. Hey guys, welcome to the Blacksmith Chronicles podcast. This week, I'm super excited to welcome back a previous guest early on our journey with the uh, Blacksmith Chronicles podcast here. And I'm excited to welcome them back. I genuinely, genuinely love to follow and keep up with their ministry. And just behind the scenes, getting to laugh with this dynamic duo, the original dynamic duo from Australia by way of Texas. They're, they're Texans now, but they still have a little bit of that Australian sound, just like I'm truly Southern. I'm never going to get away with it. They're truly Australian, but Texas is where they call home. Without further ado, let me welcome Ben and Jody Hughes back to the Blacksmith Chronicles podcast. Guys, thank you so, so much for making it possible to be with us today. Oh, yay. G'day. G'day, y'all. So good to be with you, Ryan. It's an honor for us. We love you. Yep, we're truly Australian. Um, but we love, we love Texas. We love America. Yeah. And, um, you we love you, Ryan. You can't get the Aussie <laughs> out of the Aussie, I think is how it goes. Right. <laughs> I saw one of the Christmas gifts. I believe it was from your daughter that actually the uh, front door rug that said, good day, y'all. Isn't yeah. that great? <laughs> she nailed it. So, she so did. good. We were so happy. We were like, that's a good combination of Aussiness and Texan. <laughs> I, I love bringing on people with different accents than mine because I feel like I'm never alone when people say, where are you from? Uh, <laughs> because of that, you know, but nevertheless, I, I love following the ministry, your heart, what you've done since I've got connected with you guys and learning what it is that you're doing to equip and advance the kingdom of God. It's been an encouraging uh, from a spectator's point of view, uh, for me to be able to see what has been taking place, it's been very, very encouraging. So for those that may not be familiar, kind of give us a little bit of a, um, you know, a synopsis of Ben and Jody Hughes and, and what you guys are doing. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, we at, at the core are revivalists is probably yeah. the best way to describe ourselves. And, and of course, you know, we've just been given a mandate to really go after and contend for revival. Um, what's yeah. probably maybe a, we have a real passion specifically as well for, for souls and the marriage between evangelism and revival. Yeah. And, um, and so the Lord called us to the States. We've been here just over three years now. And um, in the last three years, we've been so humbled and blown away by what he's been doing. And so, so we've been traveling um, right across America. Um, this year, we were in, I think, nearly 25 states in yeah. the middle of 2020. Um, and it's, we've now been in 39 in total just in the last two years. And, um, and so God's just had us crisscrossing the country and just really releasing revival, preaching the gospel um and we've been so blown away by all that god has done this year especially yeah Yeah. well especially just releasing hope Mm. into we've been in america all year everyone has been in america all year and uh just being able to release hope to people and especially speaking to this very unique season that we've all found ourselves in and and speak truth to it that god is moving that very much the harvest you know we just keep saying over and over that the harvest is not just ripe the harvest is desperate and I think Mm. all of us could agree despite the crazy people's hearts are desperate for the hope of God and the simpleness of the gospel and it's been such a joy hasn't it this year God has just blown our minds amazing the doors he's opened and the eagerness of people to receive Jesus and the uh, cusp that we can sense that America is on and the nations for just all out wild, you know, old time revival. And I can feel God, Mm. even as I say it, we're coming into that, you know, third great awakening, but just old time revival of the simpleness of the gospel and the truth that God's eager to move when he finds people that just want to give it all. 
Yeah, and this year we've seen it increase and increase. It's almost like every time we're at a, a, yeah. an, another church and doing more meetings. And, you know, we yeah. were just recently even in a tent crusade in the middle of California, yeah. our final thing for this year. <laughs> Which, which just gave us so Actually, much delight. Well, you're going to be <laughs> now. You're our final thing for the year. <laughs> but our last in-person meeting, yeah, was um, in a in a tent in California, you know, and it was just amazing. Just so much hunger, yeah. so many people saved. And um, we must mention though as well, the Lord has given us a real call and focus yeah. as media missionaries, and what God has been doing over media this oh. year and through television. Uh, you know, he's he's opened up some really incredible, incredible doors for us, which have blown us away. It's been yeah. humbling and um, and just such a joy and privilege. And, you know, just seeing people every single week come to Jesus online and via television, yeah. you know, all through this year. And, uh, yeah. you know, we've we've had this um, we've had this online gathering on God TV every single week. It's actually been 40 weeks exactly. Yeah from when we started to to just this past Saturday night, the last one for 2020. Yeah. And we've seen, no, without any exaggeration or elasticism, we've seen hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people yeah. come to Jesus and get saved from literally every corner of the world, um, just via online, you know? And so it's amazing what, what God is doing. Yeah, yeah it is me. You know, I love something Ben said recently, you can correct me if I don't get it exactly right, but he said something about um, that you preach the gospel not because you're an evangelist, but because you're a Christian. And I think that has summed up our message for this year. God is moving in revival, but revival is hearts on fire for Jesus and people reconnecting or connecting for the first time to Jesus. And it's it's just marked out insides that it's too easy to say I'm not an evangelist and toss it aside. We preach the gospel because we're Christians and we all do it in our own way. We all do it in, you know, the skin and the personality that God has given us. But we release the gospel because people are desperate and we're Christians. For me, it really is. Um, I guess the word I would use is fascinating to see that because I have been keeping up with what you guys have been doing with God TV and just week after week after week, the people giving their lives to Jesus. And one of the things I'm beginning to think about just actually, when I was looking at it last week, when I was looking at the people saying, yes, Jesus, you know, in the comments, whatever, you know, that particular week, yes, amen. Yes, Jesus. Yes, I did. Whatever it was. I, I begin to think about how so many times through uh, media ministry, it's more driven about releasing prophetic words. It's more driven about, you know, releasing the hot now word or the hashtag word or all that. And I honestly, when I take a step back and I think about all the different ministries, I can't name many of them that put such a focus on media uh, to see people born again. Now there's a handful of people I can think of, but it's not something that a lot of people are doing. And it fascinates me because at the end of the day, as great as prophetic words are and signs, wonders, miracles, all that stuff. And I'm not discrediting any of it because each of it has its place and its purpose in the kingdom. But the greatest of all those is to see someone truly surrender their life to Christ, to be dead and then come alive. Why was this something that really resonated in both your hearts to do this and co-labor with God TV and that be the focus? Because I, I think at the same time, I think there's a lot of people going, well, are they truly born again or this? That? There's a lot of open doors for criticism, but at the end of the day, it's our responsibility to preach the gospel and they would receive it and Holy Spirit do the work. So the criticism to me don't doesn't bear any weight in my honest opinion, but at the same time, I, I really wanted to ask both of you, what drove your heart and your passion to make sure that's what you were doing, seeing people born again? Wow. <laughs> I mean, there's lots of answers, but I, I think the simple one is, is to me, it's just another mission field. I see media as a mission field and it's a mission field for Christians who need hope. It's a mission field for, um, you know, the not saved yet that need God. And it's just a mission field. And so really for us, uh, well, for me anyway, there wasn't really a, um, there's been a growing um, 
passion for that. But the honest truth is it just seemed normal. There wasn't a, you know, a sudden realization, oh, wow, we need to preach the gospel online. It's just, that's, of course, it's all the influences that God gives us, every sphere of influence that God gives each of us are for the kingdom. And so I consider it our, um, you know, I don't want to sound holier than thou. It's just to me, the sphere of influence that God gives me is to be stewarded for the Lord and people need God. And in, you know, to, to put it this way, in revival, God always said to us, um, or we had it in our hearts, as long as God sends the people, we're going to keep going. Well, to me in media, as long as God sends the people, we're going to keep going. And every week we've seen increase on that. And somehow people find themselves on a broadcast, giving their hearts to the Lord. And we just believe that God's going to send hearts that mm. are desperate to find out that God has hope for them in this season. And, you know, I often think that the... Um, people still need face-to-face -face contact, right? But the front foyer of the church has expanded in 2020. And the mm. front foyer of the church now includes Facebook. It includes YouTube. It includes Instagram. The foyer, the meeting ground where people are going to connect with God is now online. And that's the way we can reach the multitudes. You know, I have, um, I have three quick things I want to say about mm. this. Um, Firstly, you know, X 1 8 for me, X 1 8, you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has yeah. come upon you, right? And you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, into the ends of the earth. The baptism <laughs> in the Holy Spirit, the very thing that, you know, as spirit filled believers, we identify ourselves with mm -hmm. is all about evangelism. It's all about preaching the gospel. And I, I don't call myself an evangelist. I, I don't consider myself an evangelist, but God has given every one of us as believers yeah. a central mission to preach the gospel. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. And then he said this, after the Holy Spirit's come upon you, you will receive power. So Pentecost, the baptism in the Holy Spirit, it's all for the sake of the gospel. It's all for the sake of actually being a teller of the good news. And so that's one thing. I think it's central to every single one of us. Secondly, you know, I, I have this, I have a conviction that, you know, what if somebody meets me? What if someone comes onto our broadcast and they don't know Jesus mm -hmm. and I didn't give them an opportunity to hear? I didn't give them an invitation to hear. What if that's the only time mm -hmm. they ever get to hear the gospel? What if that's the only time somebody asks them? If they want to give their lives to Jesus, and and you know, I'm 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 driven myself. Like I I see heaven, and I know that I'm going to be walking on the streets of heaven one day, you know, and I'm going to bump into someone whose name I can't even pronounce. <laughs> one of the hundreds of people from around the world this year that got saved from from li literally like from foreign countries, whose yeah. some of them are even in like in Chinese writing their names, and I can't even, I don't even. We can't even begin to read it, but they've said yes to Jesus. Um, we're going to bump into him yeah. or her on the streets in heaven. They're going to go, hey, do you remember that broadcast that day? Mm -hmm. And you gave an invitation to say yes to Jesus. I'm here today because of that invitation. Yeah. You know, and, and that's, what, that's what drives me. That's mm -hmm. what motivates me. It's about Jesus getting his full reward. And so yeah. um, I think that that's so vital, you know. Yeah. It, it's one of those things that kind of stays with me because I, I, I think about the moment you cross over into eternity. And it, for me, I, I think, you know, as everybody, as they possibly heard, Simon Peter standing at the gate, you know, he's there to welcome you. And, uh, you know, there's this process where the apostle Peter rolls out a scroll and goes, look, you prophesied all these words accurately. It's not that. However, we do have an understanding that we will see those that came to Christ because of the gospel that we preached. So it, the thing that always kind of weighs in the back of my mind of all the wonderful things that, that comes with, you know, ministry as a whole, signs, wonders, healings, deliverances, all those things to see someone truly born again is the thing that crosses over into eternity. And that's the most fascinating thing to me about it. And so, I have great admiration for your willingness to do that on 
uh, social media because again, it, it it's it's a minority, in my opinion, from what I've been able to see. Now, I will admit, I have a tendency to live underneath a rock, and uh, I, I have these people all the time, and, and they'll say, "Have you ever heard so and so?" And I'm like, "No." <laughs> you ever heard this message? No. I, I, I purposely kind of stay away from a lot of things to make sure that I'm, I'm just pure in my thought, pure in my process and all that stuff and everything. But I, I still go back to, and, and one of the things for me, and I'm, I'm going to say this and then I'm going to ask who it is for you guys. For me, I'm, I, I started out early in my walk being just really gravitating to A.W. Tozer. And then A.W. A. Tozer, for me, turned into Leonard Ravenhill. And I just, you know, I'm a huge Ravenhill fan, huge Ravenhill fan. That naturally turned into my love and appreciation for Steve Hill. And Steve Hill is someone that I never saw in person uh, before he uh, stepped into eternity and stuff and everything. But there's, there's these moments for me, there's these moments where I can, I've seen so many YouTube videos of Steve Hill I can hear his voice echoing in my mind and I can hear those words of him pleading for people to come to Christ. Uh, I can still see the video of him standing in the cemetery and talking about the day of his death and where he would be and this and that. And so there's so many pivotal moments of those gentlemen that has really encouraged me and remind me that in all the splendor that comes with ministry, the still, the most important thing is to see people born again. I'm curious, is there someone in the, in, and it may be the same people, it may be different for both of you. Um, has there been someone that you have drawn from and that has encouraged you as an individual to make sure that in all the things that we do, we still put an importance on seeing people born again? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, you know, evangelist Reinhard Bonnke, you know, yeah. what, what an absolute general and um, a truly a general, truly a legend, you know, and, um, and we've had a great privilege of, of having several kind of encounters through our life uh, over nearly 20 years uh, through our life, you know, and um, I, had the, I had the great privilege of being in Nigeria, you know, with him for his final crusade, for his farewell crusade. You know, and here he is on standing on this stage, you know, in Africa for the final time, inviting people to come to Jesus and seeing a sea of hands go up, you know, a sea of hands because he went in the mud and in the dirt and, you know, in the heat and all the rest of it and millions of people are coming to Jesus and just that simple laid down life, you know, has always been so inspiring. Um, yeah. yeah, I, I, you know, for me, William and Catherine Booth, but I also, I just want to add this to what we're talking about and I'll explain why the Booths, but I, I just think that when it comes to sharing the gospel, because I hear what you're saying, Ryan, about so much of social media ministry is about the prophetic. I don't see a delineation between giving a prophetic word and inviting people to connect with God for the first time, the second time. Uh, because if you're giving a prophetic word on peace, for instance, there's going to be someone who's watching who can't enter into peace right now because they need to connect with Jesus. And so my prophetic word on peace is simply just adding in the final little key for those that are watching that just need to know, well, the way I get the peace of God right now, the beginning point, the foundation of this is knowing that Jesus died for me and I can receive him as my personal savior, savior and my prince of peace. So and it's good. the same with any prophetic word. It's just giving the final key that for mm. those that don't know that Jesus is the key to all the prophetic words, they just need to know that. And so for me, being a prophet is also about giving them the final key, which is Jesus. Um, and so William and Catherine Booth, the, the co-founders of the Salvation Army, I'm a seventh generation Salvation Army girl. I wore the uniform. I did the lot. Um, and in Australia, it's very much a church as much as just a social organization, but I have studied them and studied them and studied them because part of being in the Salvation Army is um, a great deal of study about the roots of the Salvation Army. And so I, you know, I grew up learning about how they began a movement and how William Booth had this incredible encounter where he saw the sea of people, uh, you know, dying. I'm going to get emotional talking about it, but uh, people dying and going to hell and that marked him. And he's like, we need an army that's committed 
to not just feeding the poor, but giving them what they need to go to heaven, which is Jesus. And that marks me as a child. It marks me as an adult. And, and you know, Catherine Booth, who by the age of 12 had, had read out loud the Bible eight times. And that I like, I hear that and I'm like, no wonder they started a worldwide movement by the age of 12 reading the Bible out loud 10 times, no special mentors, no nothing, just the Bible, reading it out loud. And that, like, that grips me. And, uh, you know, when we were in California, I had another, um, I think it's really one of the most um, impacting visions I've ever had because we were sitting in this tent in the middle of California and suddenly my eyes were just opened and I saw angels in the tent and it was just a flash vision but it was real just like I'm looking at you now and I saw these angels standing there with clipboards and pens and uh, you know I knew immediately these angels were sent into this tent because they were recording the yes, and not just the yes of people, the costly yes of people, because God's raising up a new salvation army in this era, in this season, and he's looking for people who will give a costly yes to uh, release the gospel and season. And we're going to see great glory. We're going to see multitudes saved, but God's recording the hearts of those whose response in this now season to the craziness of the season say, I'm not just going to say yes, I'm going to pay a price for us, a, a price for God in this season. And that to me is what the booths did. And I believe there's a new movement breaking out in our midst right now of people who will give a costly yes to be part of a new salvation army who know the power of God, the glory of God, just like the salvation army, the original version, you know, it was the blood and fire. I believe there are going to be those raised up now and, and we're seeing it in our midst now who will pay a price to be in an army for the lord yeah you know ryan i I was thinking about this just this morning you know we are in the fishing industry (laughs) all of us as believers we are in the fishing industry and fishing is central to everything that we do jesus said to the disciples i will make you fishes of men i will make you fishes of men and then when you catch them then you make them disciples what do disciples do they become fishes of men and sure in the fishing industry not everybody's maybe on the end of a line but everybody is involved in the fishing industry fishing is core whether you're someone who fixes a boat whether you're somebody who's making the nets whether you're somebody at the other end who's gutting and cleaning and doing all of that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. but the central business that we are in is the fishing industry and I think that somewhere along the lines, we've kind of lost a focus on that. You know, the power, like Jody was saying, the prophecy, it's so that we can win people to Jesus so that we can equip them to become fishers themselves so that they can get, they can get free so that they then themselves can become preachers of the gospel and disciple makers, which are fishermen, fisherwomen. Do you know what I mean? And so all of it, healing, miracles. Yes, Jesus wants us whole. He wants us healed. But once again, it's the preaching of the gospel. And so I think that God is just reminding us all of that focus, the central focus of what we're called to do. Now, in that tent revival that y'all were in California, when you had people that were born again, y'all also had a spontaneous water baptism in like 46 degree weather. Is that correct? Well, it was even less. It was like, I think it was 34 one night in the tent. I mean, this is in California and the water was, the water's just cold water in a, in a steel trough, you know, and, um, and people are jumping in, people are jumping in and getting baptized. And now, you know, it's like 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night and it was freezing. We're in this little kind of slight Valley. And so the, the clouds were kind of getting trapped in there. It was, but I want to tell you, this is there was such a desperation and such a, a joy. There was over a thousand people in a tent yeah. in California in lockdown in the winter, and people are coming to Jesus. And you know, I think it's probably important. And th- as part of this conversation, mm-hmm. the very first night, the Lord said this to me. He said, "The first night was a prayer meeting, right? <laughs> there was the Thursday night. It was a prayer strike for the Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But there was still a thousand people in the tent." The Lord said to me at the start of the night, there's somebody in here and it's their last chance to say yes to Jesus. It's their last chance to get saved tonight. 
And that, I've never heard anything like that. And as you can imagine, that's a weighty word, you know? And Jesse Green, who we were there with, she actually gave an altar call that night and a whole bunch of people got saved at a prayer meeting in California, <laughs> right? And, and I thought, okay, well, hopefully that's kind of taking care of it. But then I was, I was then to get up and minister at the end of the night. And just as I was getting up, the Lord said to me, bang again, there's someone here and it's their last chance tonight to say yes. And so I got up and with fear and trembling, I said that, I said, look, I've never shared this before. The Lord's just told me there's somebody in this tent and it's your last chance to say yes to Jesus tonight. Who is that person? And immediately this guy, he would have been what, 35, 40, something like that. Tats on his neck and everything else. He put his hand up. He said, that's me, bro. And he came right down the front and stood in front of me. And, you know, I had the great privilege just to lead him to Jesus right there, Mm -hmm. you know, and the next night he got baptized. (laughs) Two nights later, he's out preaching the gospel Mm -hmm. on the pier in California, praying for people, leading people to Jesus. But I think about this, Ryan, I think his name is Omar. And I think, what about Omar? What about Omar? What if we didn't give him the invitation? I wasn't, I'm not saying he was going to die that night. The Lord told me, didn't tell me that, but he might have. He might, it might have been a fork in the road moment that, you know, really kind of split his life and he was going to forever go off in this other direction and never come back. But, you know, if we didn't go and we didn't preach the gospel, and we didn't ask, what about Omar, you know? Yeah, you know, that makes me think. Um, <clears throat> I'll share this quick story real quick just to because I think this is a pivotal moment for anyone listening to the podcast or watching this on YouTube and such. <clears throat> how important it is to be willing to fight for the one is is something I've always said, be willing to fight for the one simply because a similar situation happened to me many years ago. I was in Virginia and um, this young man that I knew, he gets up, testifies about his life and about a friend that OD'd on an eight ball. And so he's sharing this story and I get up and about that time, I mean, there was probably, if memory serves me correctly, there was 12 people that already came to the altar, accepted Jesus. And all of a sudden I heard, uh, don't, don't stop. There's still one. And so I just started saying, okay, we're going to pray. I announced that, Hey, there's one more. I know there's one more. We're going to pray. We're going to fight for the one. Well, 15 minutes passed, nothing happened. And I just felt this unction from Holy spirit. Don't stop praying. So we, you know, Hey guys, we're still going to fight for the one. 15 minutes turned into 30 minutes, 30 minutes turned into 45 minutes, 45 minutes turned into an hour. Wow. Okay. And literally this is after the message, the worship, everything, you know, and we're an hour into this and I'm telling Holy Spirit, Hey, we got to wrap this up. Obviously this one is not going to, you know, and Holy Spirit said, I said, fight for the one. That's what I heard fight for the one. And I turned around and said, guys, I know we're tired. It's a long night. We're going to fight for the one another 15 minutes pass. And that's when I said, okay, God, that's it. We can't go on anymore because we've been here for hours at this point. And about that time, before I even said it, I started hearing my name, Ryan, Ryan, I turned around and I saw the young man that the Lord spoke to me about. I saw him to begin with. He was kind of, when I say he was illuminated, he kind of just, there was a lot around him and that's who I knew. I didn't go get him from the altar or bring him down or anything. You know, this had to be his decision. So I turned around. I went crazy. I said, you were the one. You were the one that God showed me. You were the one we were fighting for. And a guy beside me goes, he needs to tell you who he is. And I go, okay. So he turns around. He goes, the the first guy that spoke and talked about the best friend that OD'd on the eight ball, that best friend was my brother. Oh, wow. And the next night and the next day, this guy was shipping off to the Marines. So he wow. had one night in this one moment to potentially say yes for, you know, we may have not known, you know, what could have happened or whatever the case may be, but he heard the gospel. We fought for his life. We prayed, we interceded and, you know, we fought for that one. And it's taught me a valuable lesson that when you hear the Holy spirit, talk about the one, be willing to fight for the one fight for that one in that. And so when I read your story, I did read that online It reminded me so much why one person is worth fighting for in that moment. So I'm I'm sharing that because you hear Ben's and Jody's story of there in in, in the tent revival in California. You hear that story. I just, you know, taking this time, kind of interrupting right here to remind everybody that the one is always worth fighting for prayer, fasting, interceding, whatever the case may be. 
always be willing to fight for the one in that. So in saying all that, you guys have seen some phenomenal outpourings in 2020 in the midst of chaos, <laughs> in the midst of COVID-19 and elections and possible recounted elections. And, and the list goes on and on. It has been a turbulent year to say the least. And I feel like right now, um, the body of Christ has unfortunately taken on a, a, a weariness. There, there's lots in the body of Christ that are just, it appears to be heavy burdened. They're uh, weakened just physically, mentally, spiritually in this. With everything that you've seen, is there something that you can look back on and go, this was a huge encouragement to me personally, and I believe it would be a huge encouragement for you to not look back at 2020 and go, such a horrible year, such a wasted year, because my concern now is we will look back at 2020 and hate the year, although there were many God-ordained moments and moves of God. And if we're not careful, we'll despise what God did in the midst of the trial. Is there something that each of you, or maybe it's the same thing, I don't know, that you look back and go, mm, this is what carries me on further? Wow. Yeah, well, like I already said, we're in the fishing industry right and so it's been a bumper crop this year it's been a bumper harvest this year you know what i mean it's been uh, you know personally it's been one of the most fruitful years we've ever had in ministry and you know seeing people come to jesus there's no greater satisfaction at least for myself you know there's nothing better than seeing that and so you know the bible says that hope deferred makes the heart sick right the key in that is what is your hope in do you know what I mean? If your hope is in the wrong thing, then sure, you might be heart sick. But I want to tell you this, we've seen like never before this year for many of us, you know, it's it's been one of the worst years of our generation, for sure. You know, that in history, there's been far worse years. I mean, let's not forget that. But for our generation, it's been one of the worst years ever. And yet in the midst of that, Jesus has become so real to so many. He's been so good. You know, he's, he's looked after us in, in amazing ways, you know, mm -hmm. and, and we're seeing, like we've already shared, so many miracles, Ryan, so many people coming to Jesus. And mm -hmm. so for me, you know, we, we've both, I know we've both had such yeah. joy. There's no doubt there's been challenge. it's been challenging. There's been tough things, you know what I mean? Like, but yeah, I, I don't want to, I don't want to take... Well, I, I think there's so many things. One, God has been saying to us all year, there is no season without hope. And that includes 2020 and it includes 2021 because hope comes from God. He is the God of hope and light shines in the darkness. So the greater the darkness, the more light there is. And when we can actually focus on what God is saying, and that takes a little bit of, you know, guts sometimes to go, I'm going to focus off what God's saying and what God's doing our insides get a hold of a supernatural hope and it's not a, it is a supernatural hope and that's what i want to say to everybody who can hear our voice right now god has supernatural hope for you because there is supernatural hope that god is pouring out right now that comes out of the realm of glory and the realm of heaven that god's very much moving even right now 2020 2021 god's moving and this year we've seen it and you know we would all know the saying fortune favors the bold well i want to say that the gospel favors the courageous and so as soon as we get a hold of an anointed courage inside our insides that resolute um just a resolute faith and a unapologetic boldness things start happening and i think all across the nations right now and to everyone who's uh, can hear our voice i know that if you take an honest moment you can sit down and go you know what i've learned a lot this year even through the rubbish and the you know if i can be an aussie and say the crap even through <laughs> the worst of it you have learned a lot and even if it just comes down to learning what you can't put your trust in 
that's an incredible gift that 2020 has given you because you have learned that mm. you can't put your trust in a government. You can't put your trust in just people and money. You can't put your trust in our materialism. All those things aren't bad, but you have learned what you can't trust in. And so we've also learned what we can trust in. And there's so many other things. If we just take a moment and write down a list of what have I learned this year? What's the wisdom that I've gained through pain? What's the wisdom that I've gained through chaos? What's the wisdom that I've learned in my own family? The things that I know now actually matter the most. And all those little key wisdoms that God has given us, if we grab a hold of them and take them into 2021, then 2020 has been the greatest year we've ever walked through because it's been a pivotal year of giving us the very keys that are going to unlock the abundant harvest and the promises that we've been crying out for for so long. And yet sometimes it takes something like this for us to actually break up all the rubbish and go, these things matter. And this is what matters to me. And this is what matters to my mm. family. And this is what matters to God. And if we can grab a hold of those, then 2020 hasn't been a waste at all. It's been the greatest year we've ever had. And we're going to walk into the next year without all the rubbish, the chaos, the noise and the dribble and just walk in knowing this is who I am. This is what I'm called to. And this, what's ma this is what matters. That's a gift. And that makes 2020 a gift to us. And I'm so glad we've walked through 2020 because it's put a fire in my belly like never before for the things that matter. And it's helped me drop to the ground the things that don't matter. That's so true. I, I think um, let's, let's, let's look at this and, and give you an opportunity to be very real and very raw with the listeners and those watching as well. A lot of times social media sets us up for um, kind of a false reality in the sense of if we just get a glimpse of pictures and statuses, we feel like we know individuals, although we really truly don't know them. It's kind of like, you know, you've got 5,000 friends on Facebook, but you're really not friends with 5,000 people. Uh, you know, in, in my world, I'm fortunate to be friends in real life with five people, you know, and realistically. <laughs> Um, in, in that side, but everybody's a friend, don't get me wrong, but you know, but you know, true, true friends that you can call and sit down with and, and discuss things out with. But let me kind of peel the curtain back right here. And I want to ask you guys for a real moment here, what, with everything that's been great, the salvations, the, the stories, the, the, every experience that is on the high side, yeah. what recently maybe it's not even this year, maybe it's in the past couple of years, whatever, what recently have you guys endured that really knocked you off your feet? But even though the depth of it knocked you off your feet, it caused you to pursue God all the more. What challenge really kind of took you out for a moment, but then it caused so much more growth to occur in your life? <laughs> Look, I mean, I appreciate the question and because I think it's really important, like you say, sometimes people see all of this stuff and they think, oh, well, it's all very well for you guys, you know, you're ministers and you're on TV or you're whatever, do you know what I mean? And, and, and almost like there's no challenges to go through, but, but, you know, I don't want to sound like a martyr, but the last, we, we, we've had a challenging life <laughs> you know like jody jody has genuinely you know nearly lost her life on many occasions just through battles with health and that's been ongoing over 30 years you know and then seeing great miracles in the midst of that but you know for for years and years and years you know we've we've walked on the edge of literally battling life and death and mm -hmm. things like that and i'm not trying to sound dramatic this is the reality and i think so I think for us, Ryan, it's like, you know, when you've actually really dealt and battled with life and death, it kind of forces you to come to places yeah. where you make decisions and resolutions in your heart about what you truly believe, you know? And uh, just, just to give one little, one little story, you know, there was this time where, um, where Jody was very much facing the reality of losing her life. And this was like any day she could die. And I'm not exaggerating. And um, I couldn't leave the house. 
We, we, we had no money. We couldn't travel. There was literally nothing coming in. It was happy days. And, um, and I remember I, I actually went and had to get a food um, parcel. We call it a food parcel in Australia, you know, like line up at a food bank, basically. Yeah. And um, I, was, I was down there and, and I remember I was walking around with what I called my box of sadness getting my wilted spinach and my off yogurt and my expired cheese, <laughs> you know, I'm getting all these things. And I remember I got back to my car, I make light of it, but I got back to my car and I just, I burst into tears, you know? And at this point we'd already, we'd been traveling the world as preachers, you know, we'd had an angel, we'd had an angelic encounter that encounter that launched our ministry. And I mean, a significant visitation from the Lord. And I've just burst into tears and I'm like, God, what is going on? An angel came and stood on our bed, you know? I don't know if you remember that, <laughs> you know? And, uh, and, and and I said, God, what is going on, you know? And, and the Lord really actually brought me to a fork in the road moment. And he took me to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And the fact that they were staying, standing there and they had done everything right. They were praying. They were actually facing this fire. They were facing death because of their obedience and faithfulness to God. And they look up at Nebuchadnezzar, and this is what the Holy Spirit's reminding me. They look up at Nebuchadnezzar and they say this, O King, our God is able to deliver us from this fire, and he will, but even if he doesn't, we will not bow. We will not bow. And so the Lord brought me to that moment, to that place where I had to make this decision in my heart of absolute resolution before the Lord. Our God is able to deliver us from this fire and he will, but even if he doesn't, I will not bow. I will not bow. And as you can imagine, that was a real kind of fork in the road moment yeah. for me. And um, I think when we talk about then dealing with things in 2020, we deal with different situations and hardship. Yes, they're hard. Yes, they're challenges. But when you're at that place of total resolution before the Lord, come what may, I will not bow down to the pressures of the world. I will not bow to the pressures of the enemy. It doesn't matter what happens. My heart is set on Jesus. My heart is set on serving him, even if it kills us, you know, and I don't want to sound, I'm not trying to sound dramatic, but this is the reality as believers that we must come to this place of total revolution, resolution. I've laid down my life. When we give our lives to Jesus, we give our lives to Jesus. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, to add to that, look, I think we've been through the same things that probably you have and everyone listening has, especially in this last year, you know, having times of um, your immediate family cooped up together, it, it pushes pressure on some of those issues of your own heart and your own family, and you're forced to face things that maybe other times you can put off because you, you're too busy. Um, so, you know, even just going to new levels of just dealing with your own, your own stuff, your own stuff in your own heart and, and deciding that I'm not going to put this off for another season. I'm going to look at my own heart in those areas that sometimes rile up or they feel a bit ouch at times and deal with it 100% before God, even, um, you know, and being very vulnerably, even in the last months, you know, there were times where I would be praying look I you know I give prophetic words all the time I consider that one of um, the greater graces on my life and yet I knew that I needed a greater discernment with what the the Lord's saying right now and at times I would be like God I, I want to be on the cutting edge of what you're saying I need to hear you and I think we've all wanted to hear him in this last year and I was pressing in and pressing in and and to cut it very short I think what we're all going through and certainly what I have walked through, one of the things that has been hard is carving out the personal, intimate, I'm going after God space mm. and making that the number one priority, even with favor on your life, even with doors opening up. Look, doors don't continue to open if we personally don't have a door open for one-on-one -on -one time with the Lord and making him the number one priority. And if we want to walk in the fire of God and the cutting edge words of, words of the Lord, there's only one way to get them, know Jesus. And knowing Jesus takes a commitment and a um a dogged determination that I don't care what's going on around me. I'm, I'm going after friendship 
yeah. with God. And that's been a, it's been a call over my whole life, but it seems like for all of us and even me again this year, it was another one of those moments of going, Jody, no matter how much favors on your life, it all means nothing if I'm not a friend of Jesus. And being a friend of Jesus takes time. And it's not mm. something we can put off for a rainy day. 2020 has been our rainy day. And everyone who's listening right now, you know, deciding that what matters most is our relationship with Jesus is the greatest key we can have walking into 2021 because he will give us the words. He will give us the business ideas. He will give us the keys to unlock, you know, restoration with our kids and our family and He'll give us the wisdom we're looking through to walk through a chaotic season, but it starts with friendship and that is a cost. And I think that's one of the greatest messages that God's speaking to his people in this season. We think it all comes easy and it does because friendship's easy. So please don't hear what I'm not saying, but it does cost to have a close um, friendship with the Lord because we have to say no to other things to say yes to Jesus. And I think that's one of the greatest keys God's giving his people in this season. We're learning to say no to the stuff that doesn't matter so we can say yes to the things that do. I love this because I think um, a lot of times individuals, um, they, they see other ministries and they go, oh, wow, look at the work they're doing. That's awesome. God truly is favoring them. And, you know, and then they go, they have a tendency to go, that never happens in my life. And then we have, we all have the tendency from time to time to concentrate on the negative more than the positive that occurs in our life. And so the reason I bring this up is, you know, at the beginning of this, you're talking about really the purpose that every born again believer has in declaring the gospel, in preaching, to see people born again. And then we come full circle here and just to hear a little bit, because I know your story. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've read up on it. Plus, I've got to hear the both of you share in, in multiple facets and stuff and everything. And I think a lot of times people just don't, they have this tendency to view that only bad things happen to them. And we have to realize that, again, even though it's, I would say, often misquoted uh, for purposeful gains, but, but it is, there is a biblical truth to it that it rains on the just and the unjust. There is that side of it. Bad things happen to good people all the time. Um, mm -hmm. You know, just because you're a child of God doesn't necessarily mean that you avoid bad things happening. 2020 is definitely, you know, the evidence of that, because like you were sharing, we've all been through so many similar things uh, throughout this journey. Mm -hmm. And yet there are things that in this journey that are very different from one another. But I want everyone to be able to understand that, yes, bad things happen, but also, we learn to get up, not the dust off, and keep pressing on to the Lord. Because again, everything that Ben and Jody is saying is possible, is not just possible because they're Ben and Jody Hughes, it's possible because their identity is son and daughter of God. Yeah. And the same thing must be acknowledged with every listener and those that are watching as well, to recognize that although bad things may have happened and 2020 has been challenging and, and this and that and everything that we've, we've had to go through, we've went through, we still learn to trust the Lord. We still learn to pick ourselves up and, and we press onward our hope. I'm loving everything you guys are saying. I'm really praying that the listeners will really tap into what the both of you are saying and can be able to understand that your heart is in this uh, to see people equipped in advance for the, for the, uh, uh, really the enlargement of the kingdom, uh, in that side of it. So I'm, I'm, I'm saying that ultimately to ask you this, when you're looking forward, and I know that there's not a magic formula that takes place at 1159 on 1231 to 12, you know, zero, zero AM on January 1st. And all of a sudden the page turns and everything that happened in 2020 remains in 2020. Uh, you know, it, it, there's the, if there was a magic formula, then, you know, life would look a lot different in a lot of different facets, but nevertheless, it doesn't work that way. 
However, the God that still moved in awesome ways in 2020 is still the God that's going to move in awesome ways in 2021. What do you guys see for uh, the ecclesia, and what do you see that that God is doing possibly across the nations of the earth as a, as a whole in that? Do you do you have any insight? Do you have any encouragement? What is the Lord speaking to you going forward? Yeah. Yeah. You know, for me, for next year, as well as for this year, it's been a lot about the execution of the basics, you know, like it's, it's about us doing the basics, right. And, you know, even at the highest level of sport, you know, I'm a, I'm a rugby fan coming from New Zealand, Australia, it's all about rugby. And, you know, so many times uh, you hear the commentators or the halftime coach or something like this, basics, basics, basics. Even at the highest level of sport, a game or a gold medal can be lost based on the execution of the basics, do the basics right. And so it's all about if we will do the things that we know that we're called to do, like what Jody's saying, if we will focus on our relationship with Jesus, if we'll read the Bible, if we'll pray, if we'll share the gospel, if we will, if we will make decree and declaration of the word of God, these very simple things, then success follows that, you know, success being obedience to God, you know, that's, that's really the measure. And so I think there has been a real line drawn in the sand. It's been a kind of, this year has been a defining year, you know, where it's kind of almost been like a, a mirror. It's been a measurement of our hearts. It's been a measurement of our commitment and our devotion to Jesus and the things that we really believe. And, you know, it's exposed some weaknesses and it's exposed some strengths, but it's given us that opportunity to really go, okay, here's what I believe. I trust in Jesus. I trust what he says. He is who he says he is. I am who he says, who he says I am, and he will do what he says he's going to do. And I think that if we can do all of those things going into next year, I put up a status just a little while ago, a couple of days ago. I'm really excited, Ryan, for 2021. I know it's going to be a year of great harvest and great revival. We're going to experience the glory of God like we haven't before. And that is not cheap talk. That's not just throwaway rhetoric. I know that, I mean, we've been seeing such an increase of glory through this year. And I know that next year is going to increase. I mean, what we're talking about, Ryan, we're talking about people spontaneously running up to altars and beginning yeah. to cry out to Jesus physically in church, yeah. crying, coming out and giving their lives to Jesus without an altar call. Yeah. We've seen that online as well. We've, we've been 15 minutes into an hour long broadcast where we ne nearly normally give a, an altar call at the end and people have been, how do I get saved? Mm -hmm. Like, well, I'm sorry, we're just not that actual time for that just yet. No, you know what I mean? So there's this hunger and there's this increase. Yeah. And so um, if we're in the fishing industry and our hope is in Jesus and our hope is in uh, where our hearts are set on seeing people saved and healed and delivered, then 2021 is going to be an amazing year, yeah, an amazing year. It is. I really feel um, the whole time we've been talking to you, Ryan, I've felt the compassion of the Lord. I've been on the verge of crying the whole time, which is not always normal for me. So I can... I'm the crier, to be honest. <laughs> I, it's, I've just been sitting here. I just took a moment. I'm like, God, why am I so emotional? And I think I want to say to everyone, look, well done. Well done. It's very easy mm -hmm. when you're listening to the noise of just the noise right now, you know, and um, when we listen to the noise, it's very easy to feel like this year's been a failure and we all suck and nothing's been going well. And I, I just want to speak over your hearts. Well done, because you're still standing you still believe and the things that you've learned and gained from this season are the the silver bullets the they are the keys that are going to unlock the very things that you've been crying out to god for in this season and you're a lot stronger than you think you're a lot stronger than you think because you're still standing and you're still believing and ben and i carry such a passion for this next season i think there'll still be some crazy stuff going on there'll still be some you know, chaotic stuff going on, but God has grown a people and he is growing a people and he's doing it because he's a God who decrees victories. And we are going to see so many victories, personal and corporate, nationwide and personal. And God is setting us up for comeback stories like we've never seen. And I mean the stuff that's real. Like, I mean, the seeing your family members that you've been praying for for, for decades 
to come into relationship with God or get over those addictions or break off that habitual, you know, going after the wrong people all the time. I'm talking about the stuff that touches our hearts. You know, if we keep prophesying, it's going to be God's going to give us shock and awe. Let's break that down to what that really means. That means the stuff that touches your heart. The things that we've been crying out for in the midnight hours when you can't sleep, they are the things that God is setting us up to see in this coming decade, in this coming year. He's been growing a resoluteness in his people. He's been growing a strength to carry the weighty glory that he's going to pour out. And let's not be mistaken, when weighty glory is poured out, that's when we start to see the stories of the old time revivals and the Acts 2 miracles where whole cities come to Jesus, where people cry out, what must I do to be saved? And we're seeing the, the preliminaries of that. We're seeing, you know, like the Sean, the Sean Foyt stuff where people are coming out under risk of being arrested and, and worshipping the Lord. They're all the preliminary stuff. That's only going to grow. And so I just want to encourage your heart that all this stuff we've been walking for has prepared you for such an hour as this and be excited because the things that really matter, we're going to see an abundance in these coming yeah. years. And those things are going to wreck your heart at the goodness of God to move in the valley of the shadow. He's going to move and show you that he is good and he is God. Hmm. So final question, two parts though. Number one, uh, how can people learn more about Ben and Jody Hughes? And mm -hmm. second part, will you do me a favor? Will you simply present the gospel on this podcast and give people an opportunity to receive Christ as their savior, just like you guys do? Will you take the time to do that? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Well, you can, our ministry is called Pour It Out Ministries. So you can look for Pour It Out Ministries on Facebook or pouritout.org. And of course, we've been in Jody Hughes on Facebook and Instagram and, and all of those things. Yeah, yeah. I know Ben will, um, there's two things we want to give you opportunity to say yes to our friends. And, and that's simply this. The first thing is this, God's calling us to a costly yes in this season. And he's a good God. And so when I say that, if there's fear that comes on you about the cost, the fear is always from the devil. It's not from God. A costly yes is because he wants to give us the things that cost, the pearl of great price. Hmm. And so that requires a deep surrender in our hearts to go, it's worth it. This is worth it. And I can sense the compassion of the Lord right now. And he's calling some of you to that place. In fact, all of you, I believe, are being called to that place. But some of you, just your heart's beating right now. And you know that God's saying, this is the moment you've been called to. This is the season that I've prepared you for. And there is a costly yes that God is recording down. He's recording the names of those of you who say, you know what? You're worth it, God. I'm not going to be one foot in and one foot out anymore. I'm going to be both foot, both feet in and I give you not just my yes God I'm giving you my daily yes my costly yes and I'm up for it whatever 2021 brings God I'm up for it and so I'm giving an opportunity to you right now to say yes even if it costs you're worth it Jesus and just take a moment friend weigh it up and if that's you just take this time to say yes Jesus I'm in I don't want to be one foot in and one foot out I'm in and I'm with you, Jesus, all the way. Yeah. And if you're listening or you're watching right now and you've heard all of this, but you've actually never mm -hmm. said yes to Jesus, as we've been sharing, it all begins with making the most important decision we will ever make to say yes to Jesus, mm -hmm. to receive what he's done for us. Yeah. The gospel, the good news is very, very simple. Our sin has separated us from God. The wages of sin is death. Right, We deserve to go to the cross ourselves, but Jesus stepped in and he took our place and he died on the cross for us so that we could have eternal life, mm -hmm. so that we could not go to hell, so that we could have a relationship with him because our sin separates us from him. But he stepped in. One of the most famous verses in the world says this, John 3, 16, it says, for God so loved the world that whosoever believes in him will not perish, go to hell, but have eternal life. 
And friends, I want to invite you to be part of that whosoever. Jesus doesn't force it on us. It's not forced. Our relationship with God is not forced upon us. He invites us. He says, hey, come and follow me. And you know, when I was 15 years old, I, I had never grown up knowing Jesus. I didn't know that he was alive. I didn't know that he was powerful. I didn't know that he'd chosen me and had a hope and a future for my life. But a preacher gave me an invitation. It was in a barn in New Zealand at a camp. And I'd had so much rejection and so much, you know, I was just so hopeless. I was already abusing alcohol. But the preacher, he stood up and he said, friend, Jesus is alive. He rose from the dead. He loves you. He's got an amazing plan for your life. But first of all, you need to say yes to him. And so friends, we want to invite you right now. If that's you, you've never said yes to Jesus or you've said yes to him at some point in the past, but you've walked away from him and you're not living for him right now. And you don't know if you literally died today, if you would go to heaven or hell. I want to encourage you right now, friend, you need to say yes to Jesus. You need to say yes to Jesus. And you can contact us. You can contact Ryan directly through this, this podcast or however you're watching this. You can even put it in a comment. But I want to encourage you, friend, just say yes to Jesus and pray a very simple prayer. I'm going to pray it for you. And if you're listening and that's you, I want you to just repeat this after me. Just say this. Just say, dear Jesus, I give you my life. Please forgive me for all of my sins. And I receive your forgiveness right now. I believe you died on the cross and God raised you from the dead. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to live for you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Wow. Amen. Wow. 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 Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Well, uh, the compassion is crossing over here on this side because I've just, um, <clears throat> just uh, was thinking back this, I mean, just for me personally, just a few days ago, I marked 23 years wow. of saying yes to the Lord. Wow. Huh. Um, November 30th, Mark, Bro, 23 to, years. I've just realized today is the 29th anniversary of me Whoa. getting saved today. Right wow. now, December 30 is when we're recording this right now. December 30, wow. 1991. I got saved 29 years ago today. And you, 23, far out. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> it just, it, it's a constant reminder that stirs in me and it just, I get overwhelmed at times. Um, yeah. so I appreciate you both, uh, so, so much, your heart for the kingdom, your heart for lost people, um, to, that they would know Christ and that they would embrace every aspect of the father. It means a lot to me, uh, that you would take the time out of that. So thank you so, so much. Um, I'm going to try to get a hold of myself for everybody else <laughs> that is listening and try to gain my composure, but uh, I pray, I genuinely pray that this episode has encouraged you, it's equipped you, and it has challenged you to further advance the kingdom, and we bless you all in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Thank you for listening to the Blacksmith Chronicles podcast. It is our prayer that this episode challenged you, encouraged you, and equipped you for the advancement of the kingdom of God. For more episodes or ways that you can partner with Ryan Johnson Ministries, please go to www.ryanjohnson.us or email us directly at info at ryanjohnson.us. Please join us again soon for another episode of the Blacksmith Chronicles.